This video is sponsored by Paradox Interactive. Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're taking another look at Empire of Sin as it gets its first major DLC, Make It Count. As is Paradox tradition, the DLC is coming alongside some big changes to the base game as well, and while we're focusing on the new elements that come with the DLC in this video specifically, I'll undoubtedly touch on some of those free upgrades as well, since they do change how things work in ways that directly impact the DLC too. I'll try and make those distinctions super clear when relevant. Now, there is a lot to touch on from a new class of gangster to new rackets to an entirely new mob boss and more, so let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at the major new changes with Make It Count. The Fixer Adding in a new archetype, Empire of Sin is bringing in the Fixers. This adds five new gangsters across a few levels of notoriety, with a first available for hire at a notoriety of 10. Their skills include Snapshot and Crow's Feet at Tier 1, allowing them to take shots for reduced AP costs and interrupt enemy movement respectively, while Easy Pickings at Tier 2 helps if your target is stunned or knocked out, while Bide Your Time at Tier 2 replaces Hunker Down, increasing defensive bonus from cover, granting immunity to critical hits, and boosting initiative and marksmanship significantly for the next turn. Poisoned Crow's Feet works like Crow's Feet, but also poisons people walking through the Caltrops. Piercing Round can only be used with rifles and sniper rifles, blasting through obstacles and ignoring armor. Booby Trap can plant a trap on a tile that causes a great deal of damage to whoever triggers it, while Steady Watch allows for two reaction shots in Overwatch, and Poison Booby Trap causes less damage to any single target, but hits a radius around it with poison when triggered, potentially hurting a bunch of enemies over time instead. Finally, Field of Fire is like a super souped up version of Overwatch, triggering a reaction shot on any enemy attack, action, or movement within your Field of Fire. Beyond that, Fixers have quite a few business benefits that apply to any outfit that employs them as well. As a mediator, a Fixer can get gangsters who hate each other to work together. While this might not come up too often at the start of a campaign, it might become relevant as relationships develop, potentially closing doors that the Fixer can open for you. Meanwhile, the option to bribe makes Fixers excellent defensive individuals. When battle kicks off, you're able to use the bribe ability to convince the attackers to leave without a fight. As you can imagine, this can be pretty huge if you're caught with your pants around your ankles and a racket that's of particular importance. Win some, lose some, meanwhile, helps reduce the cons that come with casinos, reducing the losses when they come up, and finally, Open Season will unlock a new racket type that you will not have access to if you don't have at least one fixer in your outfit. The Lone Shark. Yep, Make It Count is 100% an accounting joke in the name of the DLC, and I'm all for it. I love a good bit of wordplay. The Lone Shark is a new type of racket available to every crew, coming in with its own risks and rewards, and you need a minimum of $5,000 to set up a small one, though it's the only racket type with a prerequisite beyond money and space. As I said, you need to have a fixer recruited into your outfit before you can establish your first loan shark. The first fixer isn't available until you have at least 10 notoriety, so you'll either need to make do with other rackets at first, or you'll need to go and kill low-level thugs to gain that notoriety you need before you expand. It doesn't take too long to get to 10 notoriety, fortunately, so you're not waiting or wasting too much time. Lone Sharks are also the only racket that doesn't benefit from alcohol production, and they don't even need alcohol to be set up in the first place. On the one hand, this means you don't need to draw as much attention to yourself with breweries, and it means you don't need to acquire as much booze to maximize profits, but on the other hand, it means there's one less way to increase the cash value of the racket itself. Apart from upgraded security and deflection, like other rackets, loan sharks can increase their accountancy as well. While this adds to their upkeep costs, it gives a major bump to income as well, and is well worth the investment. The loan shark won't be your big money makers right off the bat, but they will bring in a relatively steady and reliable cash flow, especially if your honor is high. A small level 1 speakeasy serving swill or rack will easily make more money than a loan shark, for example but you do need breweries to keep them working, and their upkeep is significantly higher. Casinos are good money makers, but they can sometimes incur a loss. Even though the house always wins, sometimes it doesn't win enough to cover its costs either. But if your honor is high, 
people aren't likely to default on their loans, and the loan shark will keep bringing in the money. Have low honor on the other hand, and you're likely to see at least a few skip payments from time to time, and you're going to have to take care of them personally. Maxim Zelnik Next up is the new mob boss, Maxim Zelnik. While some of the bosses in Empire of Sin are caricatures of historical characters, others are entirely fictional, and Maxim Zelnik falls into the latter category. He plays up the whole mob's accountant aspect of things, focusing around the lone shark racket that we just talked about. His shark smile empire bonus helps improve those rackets and reduces the chance of their failure triggering, you'll likely want to chase lone sharks over anything else. He comes in with bolster the ranks as his combat ability. As long as he gets three kills, he's able to spend an action point to trigger it and bring in an enforcer and a fixer. Keep in mind that this kill count carries over. You don't have to get those three kills in the same battle that you will trigger the ability in. You can stack those kills in an easier battle early on and then dive into a harder one with the skill available for use from the first turn. All this means that you can run a lean operation with fewer gangsters using bolster the ranks in tougher battles to get the edge. That can save you some money and you can use that money to establish more rackets or make some more upgrades or get some better equipment. As you gain notoriety over time, these added gangsters get more and more capable, so you don't have to worry about this skill becoming outdated or weak as time goes on either. Survivor helps him live through his HP being dropped down to zero, and with Lifeline, he can apply that same help to people near him, having them bleed out rather than die right away when their HP hits zero. Lightfooted allows him to move around without triggering Overwatch, and Double Shot, Snapshot, and Break Shot allow him to cause extra damage when hitting, fire more readily at a lower AP cost, or break weapons with shots respectively. Mark for Death, Return Fire, and Steady Watch, meanwhile, help cause more damage on specific targets and allow him to cause more damage when it's not his turn, through shots back at an attacker once per round and through a second shot with Overwatch. Crow's Feet can stop an enemy in their tracks, Kill Chain can turn the tide of a battle giving you back an action point when your shot kills your target, and Bull Rush is great to move target characters around on your terms, and it's especially helpful if you've got a good melee weapon in hand. Bolster the Ranks is a really powerful skill, and you have it on hand right from the start. Make sure to save soft targets for Zelnik so he can finish them off and pull the trigger on Bolster the Ranks sooner rather than later. The support it brings isn't weak by any stretch of the imagination, and it's free, so you might as well get the extra numbers to draw attention away from your gangsters who stick around post-battle, and you know, if they get hurt, you actually have to heal them or wait until they get healed, or if they die, well, you know, you're suffering quite a few consequences. But these extra gangsters you bring in through bolster the ranks, whatever happens to them, it's irrelevant, because after the battle is done, they leave anyway. So make sure to use them as often as you can, especially for the tougher fights. Try and delay Zelnik's turn if he's up early, and let the other gangsters take a few shots at a couple different targets to, again, soften them up. Then Zelnik can come through and finish them off, and if you're lucky, you're just a couple turns away from getting those three kills and bringing in the support. Keep in mind also that you can use this ability multiple times in a single engagement, and when involved in things like a takeover, you might need to do exactly that, bringing in two individuals to support you every time you trigger the ability. Beyond skills and traits, his empire is really focused on, as mentioned earlier, loan sharks. Shark Smile again increases the level of loan sharks right off the bat, reducing the chance of people defaulting on their loans as well. Beyond that, Murder Inc. has access to a unique district improvement option too, the Accountancy Firm, increasing the income from loan sharks by a whopping 10%. This is no small number, and you can see what I mean when I say you'll want to focus on loan sharks as much as possible, despite the intro suggesting a casino focus. Now, don't get me wrong, casinos are great, but don't let loan sharks slip by. A few precincts that have loan sharks alongside an accountancy firm can make a lot of money for Murder Inc., and it can be the economic backbone for your entire operation, especially if you're able to maintain a high enough honor to avoid defaults on loans. Zelnik goes beyond the loans, though. He can get mobsters working for him without pay for 12 whole weeks, the downside being that any mobster that does end up leaving will leave for good, and finally, he's actually able to exert some diplomatic power to help with buyouts, 
and to bring an end to mob fighting. Overall, Zelnik is a very interesting character, and with his focus on loan sharks, and with the need of a fixer to actually make loan sharks possible, the casino loan shark combination is a very interesting one when playing as Zelnik. It's a big money maker, it reduces and to a degree removes your reliance on breweries and alcohol in general, so you can instead use alcohol for trade, for bribes, for, well, poisoning your enemies, or you can just avoid that racket entirely. Zelnik is a very interesting option, he opens up some very interesting angles, and of course, with his presence comes a whole new storyline, a bunch of new events, and uh, some interesting twists and turns as well. Modding support. So this goes a bit beyond the new Make It Count DLC, which is to say modding support is coming to the base game with or without the DLC, but it's really worth highlighting I think since it's looking like it'll give Empire of Sin some real extra mileage. The first phase of modding is coming at the same time as the new DLC. It's bringing with it scripting, so all the backend numbers and scripts and events are open for editing. Again, events, values, text, numbers, it'll all be adjustable, allowing for new events and adjustments to existing ones. After phase one, we'll see a second phase that implements the option to add visual mods. That's 2D and 3D artwork both, meaning modders will be able to add all sorts of new assets, guns, items, characters, buildings, the works. The final step after this will be to open up the option to mod entire neighborhoods, building types, and more. By the end of this three-phase process, we might be able to see entire overhauls, which has me very excited. If you've been following the channel lately or, you know, at all over the last couple of years, in videos or in the Discord or wherever, you might be aware of my interest in both real-world and fictional mob stories. You know, if we get The Sopranos out of all this modding, you won't see me complaining, let me put it that way. I'm curious to see the rollout of mod support, and I'm especially curious to see how modders take advantage of the options. I think the first two phases should open the door to a lot of things, and the last phase will pretty much open the door to overhaul mods set in different eras, focused around different rackets, different characters, and all sorts of cool new options. And as we've seen with folks who get on board with modding Paradox games, things can get really insane, so I'm thinking there's some exciting times ahead. And that wraps up our look at the big new things coming with the Make It Count DLC for Empire of Sin. Between a new mob boss, five new gangsters, a new racket type, and a whole new storyline and events to boot, there is a lot of meat to this DLC. Not to mention the free update to the base game is overhauling a lot of key systems and experimenting with some very interesting new ideas too. If you have any questions about Empire of Sin or the new DLC, or you have any thoughts of your own you'd like to share, drop them in the comments down below. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe for more strategy gaming reviews, previews, let's plays, and more. And as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. They'll keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big ol' thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.